Hello everyone, Matthew Chapman here with Matthew Chapman Ministries. I want to tell everyone thank you so much for those of you guys who've been watching the programs and things of that nature, supporting me on YouTube and supporting me on Facebook, you know, listening to me on the radio. Just thank you to everybody who's been supporting the ministry. I really, really appreciate it. Today we're going to continue talking about vision. And once again, this has been a great topic that I love discussing and we've been discussing for the last few weeks. But today I want to talk about the importance of the tongue in reference to the vision. Now we've been speaking from Habakkuk chapter two about writing the vision, making the vision plain and making sure that we live in by faith concerning the vision. But you know what? It doesn't matter what vision God has placed on the inside. It doesn't matter what God has said to you, spoken to you about as far as your future goes. If you speak the wrong words, you could cancel your destiny. You know, every destiny is at the mercy of the tongue. And there are so many people, they kill their business deals. They, they kill scholarship opportunities. They kill so many things with their words and they don't realize that they're the ones that cause it not to come into play, not to come into being. You know, um, there's a scripture in John, or rather there's a scripture in Luke chapter one, and this is talking about John the Baptist, and this is talking about the birth of, the birth of John the Baptist. And if you look in verse 13 of Luke chapter one, an angel, approached Zacharias and said, Fear not, your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear you a son and you shall call his name John. And then the angel goes on to say all these great things about John and what he's going to accomplish and all these things he's going to do and things of that nature. And then in verse 18, Zacharias said, Whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well stricken in years. And the angel answered him and said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I'm sent to speak unto you and to show you these glad tidings. And behold, you're going to be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because you believe not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And, you know, Zacharias was struck dumb and he could not speak until John was born. And he wasn't able to speak until they approached him and said, what do you want to name the child? And once he wrote down the name John, the Bible says that his tongue was loose and he was able to speak again. Do you know that God had to shut him up so that the vision or, or the things that Gabriel was saying to him would actually come to pass? And so we got to recognize and we have to understand that our, our words, your mouth, your tongue can kill your dreams. Your words can kill your opportunities. Your words can kill so many things in your life. The Bible calls the tongue a destructive force, a destructive force rather. And it talks about how it can set your course on hell because that's how powerful your tongue is. And so many people, they're always talking about things like, you know, I'll be the next one to be laid off. You know, they're concerned about, oh man, I wonder what's gonna happen in my future. I wonder if, you know, I'll ever, you know, stop living from paycheck to paycheck. You know, some people who are single, they'll say things like you can't find a good man if they're a female. And if they're a man, they say ain't no good women out there. You can't find a good Christian man. You can't find a good Christian woman. They'll say things like there are no opportunities out here. Ain't nobody hiring out, th out here. How am I going to get a job? Man, you can't find a job in, in, in the um, economy that we have right now. And so, so many people, they're killing themselves with their own tongues. You know, one man said this. He said, our lives go in the direction of our words. Your life goes in the direction of your words. So if you're having a, a hard time finding a job right now, I would check on what I've been saying. If you're single right now and you're desiring to be married one day and you're having a hard time finding somebody who's compatible, check them on what you've been saying. Are you saying you can't find a good man now? Are you saying it's hard to find a good woman now? What are you saying? Are you talking about how hard it is to find a good opportunity and how you can't make it in this world? Are you saying that you can't make it in this world because of the color of your skin? Are you saying how you can't make it in this world because you're a woman? I mean, what are your excuses? What are you saying? And I guarantee you what you're saying has been hindering you. Let's look at a familiar scripture. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 18 and let's look at verse 20. It says a man's belly, or you can say a woman's belly, shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Your words are like seeds, and eventually you're going to eat the fruit of what you've been saying. So what have you been saying? 
Are you saying my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? Are you saying that God is doing exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think? Are you saying that God is able to meet are you saying that God is able to increase me financially? Are you saying that no matter what the doctor says, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus and that there's nothing too hard for God? Are you saying that, that, that God can handle cancer? God can handle high blood pressure? High blood pressure can't stay in my body in Jesus name? Are you saying that my kidneys function in the name of Jesus? Are you saying that my mind is strong and getting stronger all the time? Or do you say, man, the older I get, the more I forget? See, the, you, you have to watch what you're saying. You, it's, it's, it's paramount. This is probably one of the most important subjects you could ever talk about because, you know, there's a gentleman that I know of and, 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 and he may be watching, but he said stuff like this. Oh, man, you know, things are going too good right now. Something bad is bound to happen. You know, why would you say something like that? Because people don't understand that death and life are in the power of your tongue. But see, so just like you can speak life into a situation, you can also speak death into a situation. Now, that's a good thing if you think about it, because you know what? The Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is power. And so, you know what? You can speak death to cancer. You can speak death to high blood pressure. You can speak death to debt in your life. You can speak to the dead in your life and tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. You can tell cancer to get out of your body in Jesus name. You can tell your blood pressure to be normal in Jesus name. You can speak to your body and tell your body you are healed by the stripes of Jesus and that no sickness or disease can dwell in your physical body in Jesus name. You have to constantly be speaking the desired result. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Now, let me ask you a question. If what Jesus said is true, what are you saying? Because he said you can have whatsoever you say if you don't doubt in your heart. So if I truly believe that, then you know what I'm saying every day? I'm saying God is opening up doors for me that no man can shut. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that wealth and riches are in my house. I'm saying that every bill is paid and every need is met in Jesus name. I'm saying that my God supplies all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm saying that the angel of the Lord is encamping around about me and that no hurt, harm or danger will come nigh to me and no plague will come near my dwelling. You know what I say every day? I say that my children are serving God all the days of their lives. I'm saying my children are growing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. I say every day my relationship with my wife is improving and getting better every day. My relationship with my children is improving and getting better every day. The Bible says in Romans chapter four, verse 17, that God calls those things which be not as though they were. And you know what? If God can do it, you can do it. A lot of times people say, oh, man, if I call those things which be not as though they were, I'm lying. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. So if it's impossible for God to lie and he calls those things which be not as though they were, then it's okay for you to call those things which be not as though they were because guess what? You're not lying either. So when you say I'm employed, when, you're, when you call yourself employed, when you currently don't have a job, you're not lying. You're calling those things which, which be not as though they were. When you're calling opportunities to you, when you're saying that God is opening up, opening up those doors for you, you're not lying. You're calling those things which be not as though they were. Let's look at another scripture and let's look at Numbers chapter 14. And, in, and for those of you guys who are familiar with this scripture, this is the story of how in, in chapter 13, they sent the spies out, the spy in the, the spy of the land, the promised land that God had promised. And they had been in the wilderness for several days. And God is saying, all right, now it's time for you to see the land. It's time for you to take the land. Go send some people out to check out the land. And God had told them that it was a land filled with milk and honey. God had told them that it was a great land. God had told them all these things that was in that land. And you know what? The people should have known. You know what? God can't lie to me. So you know what? If God said that the land is ours, the land is ours. But you know what they did? They went into the land. They spied out the land. And the only thing they talked about was the giants. And then you know what they said? They said, we're not able. They said, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. In other words, their words were contradictory to what God was saying. And you know what? Out of all of those spies, I think I believe it was 13 spies. Out of the 13 spies, might have been 12. But out of those spies, only two had a good report. Joshua and Caleb. There were only two that were saying, hey, you know what? We could take the land. If God says we could take it, we could take it. Everybody else was having a pity party. The Bible says that the, peop the people were crying and they were upset. 
And they were saying how we can't take the land. God brought us out here to die. We should have stayed in Egypt. And in Numbers chapter 14, verse 28, God said this. He said, saying to them, saying to the people, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Now you think about that. God says, whatever it is that I hear you saying down there in my ears, that's what I'm going to do. In other words, God's word, God's will, rather, God's will to us is his word. Our will to God are our words. In other words, everything that God hears me saying is my will to God. And everything I see that God says in his word, that's God's will for me. So if I tell God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. If I tell God I will die of this disease, if I tell God I'm going to be popping pills all the days of my life, if I tell God I'm going to always live in this kind of house, I'm going to always live in this kind of neighborhood, I'm only going to be able to drive this kind of car, and I'm only going to be able to live this kind of lifestyle. And if, if, if that's what I keep saying, and God keeps hearing me say that, God says, hey, truly as I live, if you've spoken in my ears, that's what you're going to have. So I want to encourage you today, watch what you're saying. Watch what you're saying in the presence of God, because God is omnipresent. God is everywhere and God is hearing what you're saying, you know, in your bedroom. See, a lot of times as Christians, especially as church going folks, you know, when we're in church or we're out and about and we see another believer and say, hey, man, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The Lord is on my side. My things are getting better for me all the time. But then once you get from around their presence, then you really speak how you feel. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Man, I got this bill due. Man, they're talking about taking my car. Man, they're talking about taking my house. And why not say, you know what? I know what they're saying, but my God will supply all of my needs. My God is going to come through for me because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says there is nothing too hard for God. And I want to encourage you today to start saying that. There's nothing too hard for God. God can pay my bills. God can get me out of debt. Matter of fact, God, I think that I'm out of debt. Father, I thank you that I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever think. You know, there's an affirmation list that I have at home. And one of the things I say is my finances improve beyond my dreams. I saw that affirmation. I saw that confession. I said, boy, I'm saying that every day. My finances improve beyond my dreams. No matter what I face, I'm able to pay for it. No matter what I encounter, I can pay for it. You see what I'm saying? I can have what I say. My life goes in the direction of my words. So my question to you today is, what are your words? What are you saying? Because you can have what you say if you don't doubt it in your heart. I want to encourage you today. Write down your goals. We talked about this day one. Write down your goals. Right. But when you write the goals down, speak the goals. And when you're speaking your goals, you, you say something like this. I'm an entrepreneur in Jesus name. I'm doing business all over the world. I don't know what you're what your goal is, what your vision is. But me personally, you know, every day, I thank you, Lord, that I'm, I'm ministering the word of God on television. I'm ministering the word of God on the radio. I'm ministering the word of God on the internet, all over the world. People watch me from all over the world. You see what I'm saying? I'm speaking the desired result. I'm speaking what I believe the will of God is. And so every day I'm saying that because eventually my confession is going to become my reality. And that's what we want. If your confession is based on the word of God, if your confession is based on your desired result, eventually your confession will become a reality. So my question to you today, once again, is what are you saying? You know, Capital One says, what's in your wallet? My question to you is, what's in your mouth? What are you saying? And is what you're, it is what, and is what you're saying in line with the word of God, because death and life or in the power of the tongue. It's one thing for somebody to come against you, but it's a whole nother thing when you're coming against yourself. So you got to make sure that everything that I'm saying is in line with the word of God. Everything I'm saying is in line with the will of God. And I have to make sure that whatever it is that I desire, whatever vision and goal, whatever it is that God has placed on the inside of me, that God has spoken to me about, I have to make sure on a daily basis, I am speaking the desired end result. It doesn't matter if I can't see it. I have to say it before I see it, because if I say it, eventually I will see it. So we have to make sure that we're not moved by what we see. We have to be moved by what we say and make sure that what we say is in line with the word of God. So I want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching these these uh, we'll say broadcasts 
on, on social media, those of you who watch me on YouTube, those of you guys who listen to me on the podcast, those of you guys who have been supporting me, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. God is going to continue to take us from glory to glory. So thank you guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day. God bless you.